The features of spiders that let them walk on water are primarily that they can't get wet and secondarily that they have hairs on them that also can't get wet. That is the surface of both at the molecular level are hydrophobic and that means that water is repelled by them. Raft spiders are another species that can walk on water. Their weight is supported by two different forces. The surface tension is really the primary one in this case. The other is buoyancy, because when she makes a dimple, by pushing down on the water, that acts just like a hull of a boat is supported some by the density of the water trying to flow in. Each leg makes its own supporting dimple in the water. So a floating spider is like a tiny multi-hulled boat. Now how about how we're being propelled? Propelled toward the shore, let's try not to go there. As I pull against these oars, what's happening is that I'm pushing water away from me, backwards, and the momentum that I give to the water backwards is the same as the momentum that I give to the boat forwards. That's one of Newton's laws. And actually when you look out there at the end of an oar, you can see that it's moving the water backwards, the boat goes forwards. For fishing spiders, it's not quite so simple. They have very little to push against because there's almost no friction between the spider and the water. Yet they still manage to row across what is for them a very slippery surface. There have been a variety of models of how that might happen. One is that as the spider's leg moves backwards, if it moves backwards fast enough, there's a wave that forms on the leading edge of that leg. As with an oar, the leading edge is the side that's pushing against the water. Another possibility is that the leg and the dimple that moves with it could themselves act like an oar and really behave the way an oar does. To test the wave theory, Bob uses a leg from a dead spider attached to a sensitive force meter. Moving water pushing against a fixed leg mimics a moving leg pushing against still water. The end result is the same. As the water speeds up, a wave starts to build on the side of the leg that's pushing against the water. It turns out a really interesting thing about waves on water is that there are no waves on the earth on water if the, if the thing causing the wave is uh, less than 20 centimeters a second. If, that is, waves just don't go less than 20 centimeters a second on the earth. Well, a quick experiment measuring the force on the leg as the leg moves slowly and then faster and then faster and then faster shows that there's a continuous rise in the force that's generated from zero velocity to, say, 40 centimeters a second. A slow-moving leg still creates a propulsive force. If waves were what mattered, the spider couldn't get underway unless it moved its rowing legs backwards at more than 20 centimeters a second. Metallized beads and a low-power laser reveal that the dimples that support the spider are also the key to rowing. Just like an oar, a moving dimple creates turbulence and changes the momentum of the water around it. Anytime you change the velocity of the water, you're changing the momentum that the water has. And a change in momentum is the same thing as a force. The momentum the moving leg gives to the water backwards is the same as the momentum that the water gives to the spider forwards. It's the viscous drag of the water tugging at the leg and dimple that provides the resistance the spider needs to propel itself forward. High-speed video reveals that a rowing spider is like a four-oared boat. When a spider wants to start moving by rowing, it picks its legs up, moves them forward, then pushes them into the water surface, making this thing that I keep calling a dimple 
and it's that deep dimple then that gets moved across the water surface and constitutes the same thing as the paddle part of an oar, that is the wide part of an oar. Here we go, so now watch the dimples change shape. Push down, push down, go off screen. Um, let's look at that one more time. And watch both sides now. The third set of legs now, second set of legs next. So each time it takes a stroke like that, it's pushing its legs down into the water just a, just a bit, not enough to break through the surface tension, just enough to make this dimple, which is the equivalent of taking something that's long and skinny and pushing it down into the water surface and making it into something that's oar-shaped because it goes from being a skinny leg to being this dimple, pushes the dimple back, makes the spider go forward. But rowing still has its drawbacks. When a, when a spider is rowing, then it's got serious problems as to how fast it can go because it's partly because it's touching the water on the part of the return stroke and partly because it can't move its legs very fast backwards and still have the dimple intact. Mm -hmm.